Hello, welcome to the Music Cave. So, I'm going to go over guitar design. Uh, probably spend more time on headstock design because I think that's what um, most of you will be doing, at least this summer. And uh, I'm going to show you a variety of purchased guitars and guitars that I've made as well. And um, for most talking videos, you know, go ahead and speed up to at least 1.25 speed to get through this. Um, I try to keep it short, but no promises there. Um, I tend to go on tangents, so I will try to stay focused. Um, so here we go. We'll start with some, well, kind of a little bit of both, actually. So this is one of my current favorite guitars. This is the Fender Meteora designed by Josh Hurst and well we'll look at the headstock in a minute um, this is an offset guitar which I'm a big fan of by offset I mean that the waist the waist isn't you know directly across it's kind of shifted so you've got this low point and this low point and then usually the the back here will also be kind of offset so hopefully that makes sense and I created this mashup. I call it the Stratiora because it's basically a lot of the Meteora shape, but it has Strat electronics. And we'll talk a little bit more about that pick guard um, in a bit. A student did that. So all I did was um, I scuff sanded it with 320 grit sandpaper. And this was one of my students that just was constantly doodling in class all the time. And I noticed that she actually had talent. I really enjoyed her style very much. And I so I handed her this pick guard and said, hey, why don't you do something with it? And she created this masterpiece, which I dearly love. Loved it so much I built a guitar around it. So that is a Strat pick guard, not a, not a conventional Strat or a traditional Strat because it's got the humbucker in the bridge position there. But um, Strat bridge, uh, it's got a, I put a Strat neck on it. So this is made in Mexico. That is one of the iconic headstock designs. Um, Strat, a caster, is arguably the most popular guitar ever. They still make many, many thousands. I, I, I wonder how many million Strats are out in the world, but there really has to be millions. Um, so that is the Stratocaster head headstock, and uh, boy, so the Meteora has a headstock. It's just slightly larger, and that was from a Jaguar, or a Jaguar, depending on where you're from. Um, a similar shape. Now. It's also worth noting that in lawsuits of guitar design, the one thing that seems to win a copyright lawsuit is the headstock shape. For some reason, the bodies, um, you, you can just copy someone else's body design for some reason and get away with it, but for some reason, the courts seem to protect the headstock. So, Strat, very uh, slightly larger, Jaguar or Jazzmaster also um, headstock and I what Leo was going for there was uh, if you look at the side of a classical stringed instrument like a uh, cello or a double bass or something if you look at the peg head from the side it looks similar to that um, this is predated by a design by Bigsby, but uh, this does look different than the Bigsby headstock. Similar, but definitely different, and I would say better looking than what Bigsby came up with. So, sticking with uh, another purchase guitar, this one came from the 80s, 1986, when pointy guitars were all the rage. And... Um, a young John Page. This is made in Japan. This was a period in Fender's history where they did not make guitars in the U.S. They had shut down, you know, financial troubles. They'd shut down the U.S. factories, and for a couple of years, uh, or at least a year plus, all their guitars were made in Japan, including this one. And this particular guitar is—it's um, called the Fender Performer, 
and it's a fantastic instrument. It's really wonderful. Um, but you can kind of see it's it's strat esque, I guess, in general shape, but it is slightly offset. I don't know if you can see it, but it's offset, including the back, kind of has that offset shape. And then the horns are kind of pointy, which I think looks cool. Now, I've been purposely avoiding the headstock for a reason, which you'll see now. Um, yeah, <laughs> I don't know what to say about that. I don't hate it. It's kind of cool, especially for a Fender, because um, Fender usually does classic Fender shapes, like those, or the Tele, which we'll talk about in a minute. And so, pointy guitars, pointy headstock, why not? I do love that logo, though. That logo is very unique. Um, it's, uh, I think it's just from the Japanese Fenders, and possibly, well, no. I think there was another one called a Katana. Another, like, super pointy guitar that had that same logo. But it, that's pretty cool. So, Fender, Performer. Um, Alright, here's one I made recently. This is in the spirit of COVID-19 and the coronavirus. Now, I'm not nearly as good of a Sharpie artist as my student on that other guitar, but I had some fun with this, um, as many of you can relate. At the beginning of the shutdown, it was endless Zoom meetings, one after another. I used to like Zoom, but um, kind of got sick of it. So this is my Sharpie art. Just, so just keep in mind, if you're building an economy kit, and if you can draw a bit, or if you have a theme in mind, um, just scuff sand that pit guard and go at it. Um, uh, clear, I would spray a clear coat on it, um, and there's a, a variety of clear coats you could choose. And you may notice something different about this. So this is also a Stratiora, but more of a traditional, which is the single coil pickup in the bridge. But you may notice... I built this one out of cardboard because I was encouraging my students to make stuff at home during the closure out of cardboard and I showed them that you could even make a guitar out of cardboard and here's the headstock hopefully it'll focus Got some glare there it is I called it the COVID caster and uh, if you're curious of course, it's not just cardboard, because that probably wouldn't work. I did add a quart and a half of resin to give it a, a spine and a backboard, to, or a backbone, rather, to resist uh, string tension, of course. So, just straight up cardboard, I, I doubt it would work. I mean, it would, <laughs> would kind of work, but I, it wouldn't probably be that playable, and certainly wouldn't be durable. Okay, moving on. This is a... Uh, stem guitar signature kit and this is the one that I built during my first uh, guitar building institute back in 2013 and this is called the surf and it's called the surf because it's offset and it's also based on kind of that jazz master jag jaguar shape um, that was really popular with a lot of players that played surf rock. So if you see a surf rock band, they will probably have an offset that looks something similar to this. And here's the headstock design they came up with for that. I was trying to kind of echo the curves on the body. So I was trying to kind of mimic that because I believe that the headstock design should be coordinated with the body design um, in some way at least and I don't hate that <laughs> it's okay I don't know if I'd ever use that particular shape again but I think it I think it works with this guitar I'm not embarrassed to show that now I have done at least one headstock that will never be seen ever because um, it is embarrassing uh, let's look at some more purchased guitars. So this is a bass guitar. It's a Reverend Watt Plower. It's the signature bass of this guy, Mike Watt. Incredible punk and rock bass guitar player. And that is a Reverend headstock. I don't think they use this 
headstock on every model, but I know a lot of them, they, they use that particular headstock. And I dig it. It's cool. This base is awesome. Now the body is, uh, it's very Gibson-esque because uh, Mr. Watt played uh, Gibson basses, and so it's not a direct copy, um, but I love it. I think it's fantastic. Here's another one of my favorite uh, vintage guitars made in the USA in Mississippi. Um, this is a PV. I'm a PV fanboy, and I like that headstock. I think it looks great. This is a fantastic guitar. Most uh, vintage US made instruments are ridiculously expensive, and somehow the PV T60s and the T40 basses, they're not as expensive or not as cheap as they used to be. You used to be able to get them for a song. People are starting to realize how incredible they are, and prices are going up, but not, they're, I think they're still a bargain. Um, I could talk on and on. This is a an import. It was, this was a kit of an SG that I kind of pimped out, and so this is not a Gibson. And this is a three by three headstock, and I don't think any of the signature kits. Um, actually, it might be an option on some of them, but we're not going to spend a lot of time talking about three by threes. Um, they're cool. I actually prefer. I do prefer the inline six. I don't know. It just it makes more sense to me because um, you're turning the the tuning keys at the same direction and they're all in a line. So um, everybody needs to own a PRS. Of course, most PRSs are way too pretty for me, and I don't think I'm worthy of. I think some people will, can relate. I don't feel like I'm worthy of most PRSs, but this is a. Uh, this is part of their S2 series, so still made in Maryland, but uh, you know it's just painted. I think it's some kind of a, I think it's black limba uh, wood, or maybe a mahogany neck. But um, I don't know if you can tell, but it's an offset, of course. When I saw this guitar when it came out, I don't know, three four years ago, I had to have it. I knew that was the PRS for me, and I do love it. Okay, here's a few now that I made. So this guitar is based on, back up a little bit, it's, it, well, it's heavily inspired by the Ernie Ball Music Man, St. Vincent. And I just really was Jones to do something different and angular, and I love that. I still want to someday get a real uh, Ernie Ball, but I like my interpretation of it. Um, if I ever do another one, I will change a few things. It's The body is slightly small. I, I want it to be smaller, but it's probably too small. So body, neck, and that's my headstock. So instead of just doing a pointy headstock like the performer, I thought I wanted to add just a little bit more to it, and so that's what I came up with for that. Um, okay, here's a tele-shaped body that I made out of western red cedar and stained it red. Um, and this one is 24 inch scale length, so it's actually uh, the neck, it's a warmoth neck out of roasted maple, but um, so it's got kind of a traditional fender headstock, much like a Strat, um, but then I added that little chamfer to it, just to, just so it was not quite, you know, the just the typical. It's always nice to personalize your stuff. Um, this guy, this is the body shape. So this used to be available in semi guitar. This is they called this the single cut junior. I think Doug Hunt came up with this and this is my take on that. And another warmoth roasted maple neck. And that shape they call the warhead. And again I put a heavy bevel or chamfer on that. And there's quite a few manufacturers that do a variation of that shape and I 
I like it. It's fairly simple, but I think it looks good. Pedal board. One of my pedal boards. Uh, this is a Gibson Flying V. We won't spend a lot of time on this, although, well, it's not actually a Gibson. I think this is an Ibanez. Uh, it's what they call the lawsuit guitar. It's actually got a bolt-on neck. And this was a mid-80s Warmoth replacement neck, but 3x3, three three, but of course, I think a Flying V with that body shape has to have that headstock shape as well. Um, there's a little Squire Mini that I got from one of my kids. Um, you know, typical Fender headstock. Let's look at, oh, here's something different. This is one of my son's guitars. This is a Chapman, and it's got like a Tele, a, tele, a Fender Telecaster body shape. And it's actually got a tele, sort of Tele-esque headstock, but it's uh, reverse. This bit being pointy um, is unique to uh, Tele. Uh, the reverse thing, some people love it. It was super cool for a minute. Um, I think that may be waning a bit now. Uh, I never really cared for it in, in use. It just seems uh, kind of weird to me. Um, okay. That's an acoustic, and I'm an Ovation guy. That is the, that's their kind of iconic headstock design for Ovation. If you see that heavy bevel, um, uh, the words are escaping me now how to describe that better than just the bevel, but they did do a few electric guitars with a headstock similar to that. And here is an Ovation from the 80s, back in the Super Strat era. So it's got an angled humbucker in the bridge, and you can see it's very much a strat body shape with some, you know, fancy contours on the edges. And that's what they came up with for their headstock, which I like that. And I've seen variations on that since, but this is from, you know, mid 80s. And cigarette burn and all, that was not for me, but yep, that was pretty typical and what else we talked about uh, there's a pv base that's a t40 with that iconic pv shape oh my covid caster if i didn't mention it it's kind of heavily inspired by the uh, pv headstock there's a dan electra 12 string which we won't even talk, you know, that's a six by six there. We don't even talk about that. And then, now, we're going to talk about design and brainstorming. And this was, this concept was taught to us, the STEM Guitar Project, by a professor named Luke Jumper from Lewis and Clark Community College in St. Louis. And he goes at 10 and 20. He, he teaches a variety of things, including architecture. And um, you can get these practice sheets down. We'll include a link, but it's, it's on the STEM guitar, uh, guitarbuilding.org website. And you can get two of these on here. The no-fly zone, that's because this is where the tuning machines go. And if you want to be super minimalistic, that is the minimum amount of wood you'd go with on a headstock. And you'd end up with something that looks similar to a Parker fly. But the idea here, we call this 10 and 20. And it's a, it's a brainstorming exercise. Um, and one of the keys to brainstorming is you don't overthink. You just quickly get out a variety of ideas. Just, you know, don't, don't dwell on it. And so 10 and 20 is uh, 10 designs in 20 minutes. So you set actually set a timer for two minutes and then you know just start drawing shapes. And don't get too hung up on it. So that's obviously, well, that's sort of fendery. And then but you can I mean you can work on it. To me now, I, I guess when I first did this, two minutes didn't seem like much time. But now I realize that it's actually plenty of time for brainstorming. And then encourage, well, I encourage you, and you should encourage your students to, you know, do a, do a variety. Um, 
of ideas and so um, get them to work on it for two minutes set the timer actually I want to go like that well I'm doing this one hand and I'm holding the camera with the other so two minutes and then you should just say time next one get them to crank it out and and just keep moving and you know you'd want to talk to them about straight lines versus curved lines and uh, and now most of you this summer are going to be doing the the economy kit which is you know it's a stratocaster knockoff so you're probably not going to do anything pointy uh, with that i mean you can it's your guitar do what you want but um you know i don't i don't know the, the old performer i guess yeah, I, I suppose you could mod, you could actually modify a strat if you wanted to get crazy and um, turn it into a performer. Um, see, that's that's ugly, but you know who cares? Uh, yeah, that's the idea. So ten designs in twenty minutes, and, and don't think about it too much. And then out of the ten designs you come up with, pick your favorite and and refine it. You know, I I hate all three of those. And uh, I wouldn't go with any of those. And so, but I could come up with 10 designs and then start um, refining it. So, hope this helps a little bit. Um, have fun. There are books on this. And of course, obviously, uh, images on the web. Um, you know, the, just you're going to want to type if you're searching, if you're doing a new search internet search type uh, in line six that's what this is called because you've got six tuning machines all in a line in line six guitar headstock is that would be a great place to start and you will see of course tons of fender shapes but you'll see some other stuff so this is 10 and 20 in line six guitar headstock so Man, I hope this helps, and I hope this video is somewhat coherent. Cheers!